Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Bahrain Now with me, your host, Lara Sam'an. We've got a great show coming up featuring great local talents, initiatives, and happenings from around the kingdom. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Jazz Bahrain hosted an exciting youth festival to celebrate the achievements of its young entrepreneur students. And today we have with us a participating team with their project, Bietna. Joining us in the studio are CEO Saud, Head of Finance Khalid, and Head of Product Development Ali. Hi guys and welcome to the studio today. Good evening, good evening. Thank you. So, can you tell us about Bietna project and what it aims to achieve? So, Bietna, uh, Bietna is a, a group of students um, from Al Hakma International School. So, our team um, we've gathered uh, multiple students who, who are talented, uh, with gifted talents, and we came up with this team and tried to um, find out problems in Bahrain. And we, came, we stumbled upon the problem, which is um, having uh, uh, the lack of trees, planting, and all of that. So we came up with this with our company, Biatna. So Biatna, um, simplest form, is uh, a group of prolific, innovative, and creative students who are always uh, trying to achieve the best for Bahrain. Okay, which is amazing, of course. And can you tell us, um, how can your project make a tangible change in the environment? Our project is meant to like boost the efficiency of planting in Bahrain. Okay. It helps the uh, possibility of planting growing. It decreases the, uh, the survival rate. It decreases the amount of water to use. It tackles a couple of problems, يعني, uh, mainly the uh, the desertification that we have in Bahrain, the dry climate, يعني, and the especially in the summer when it's really, yeah. really, really hot. Yeah, definitely. and always our plants always. They yeah. always yeah. yeah, they do. So yeah. the we, want, we really want to tackle that part, but the problem, and also the uh, loss of biodiversity. Like okay. Like the less trees, we also have some desert, desert uh, desertification and deforestation in the region. Yes. So Correct. planting more trees increases the biodiversity, and the water usage. So okay. it's a lot. Of, uh, Bahrain is the second in the world and water consumption per oh square wow. meter yeah. wow. so with that uh, that amount of usage you get a lot of a lot of waste especially mm -hmm. in the planting field okay wow so i did not know that that we were second that's wow. interesting. Interesting yeah fact. it's a very very yes. interesting fact can you tell us about the product that you guys have created it's called the cocoon okay it's meant to help the planting of the uh increase the soil rate uh, you can see inside here have this basin this right now. A basin which you can fill with 15 liters of water. Okay. And a little string here that drips. That, that, that drips out the water? Yes. Or yes. Okay. That helps okay. irrigate so the soil around okay. the plant. Okay, so yeah. it, this helps the trees actually stay with water for a really long time. Yes. So with the cocoon, the it c would normally stay up to one year. You just have to wow. fill it up two to three times depending on the tree. Okay. And the cocoon, as my fellow colleague said, that increases the uh, rate of that the tree to actually filling it up one, not that many times is amazing so yeah. it makes it easier less and more resources yeah less more resources and it's easier because then the trees can live actually longer because yeah. you don't have to worry oh i didn't water my tree today i didn't water yes. my plant today which the is cocoon good. actually makes uh, a microclimate under the tree to yeah. help the roots uh, get water and help to sustain the tree it's amazing. I love that you guys called it the cocoon. Yeah. It's such a nice name, the yeah. cocoon. The cocoon for the tree. I love it. Yeah. And can you tell us about your experience within Jazz and the support you guys have received? Oh, brilliant experience, to brilliant be honest. Brilliant experience. I speak for the whole team. The experience was phenomenal, to be honest. Um, I really liked the experience, as uh, I, uh, I think that my fellow colleagues also like it. Yeah. Um, the support they gave us, the uh, opportunities they gave us. We participated in uh, the Water Garden uh, Youth Festival, which was okay. last week. So basically it was uh, Thursday and Friday from 4 uh, p.m. to 10 p.m. where we uh, showcased our product and uh, uh, presented in front of judges, which is a part of the competition. And uh, we also are par participating in FILA, uh, where we sell our product on the website and uh, hopefully reach out the whole message and the whole product to multiple people and um, to yani, many um, people around the world. People around the world, yeah, basically. Yeah. Which, is, which can happen, I'm very sure, because this is the best way to save trees, plant more trees, save water. It's in all different aspects. There's a way for people to save the environment. Yes. yes. And can you tell us what is, what is your personal plan to take your project forward? What are you planning on doing? Or what would you like to do next? 
Uh, we would like to link up our company, our product to other campaigns that help achieve the Bahrain 2030 mission vision, and vision, yeah. which is to plant a million trees yeah. that will boost us with social media capital and our uh, financial plan in the future and be listed in the WLL companies uh, in Bahrain. Hopefully very soon you will be because okay. the cocoon is, is amazing. Thank you, and thank you. what would you tell somebody as advice if they were interested in a relevant project, how can people get involved as well with you guys? To involve with us, we, like we're trying to spread the world on Bahrain and go for the globally very soon. Uh, we have our Instagram at BEE2TNA. Okay. You can follow us there, contact us there. We'll, like, right, we'll, we'll be glad to help you. To okay, which is amazing. Us. And is there any advice you would give anyone if they wanted to start a project like this? Uh, be confident, be passionate. It's, it's all about the experience. Don't worry about the competition. It's all about the experience. You're going to benefit you're going to learn and you're going to enjoy the experience every single moment. Just take it in, relax, <laughs> and it will be amazing. Yeah, that's very true. It's very yeah. true. I, li I like how you've, you worded that. And would you guys like to add anything before we end the segment today? Would you like to tell anybody anything? Oh, we really like, enjoy the opportunities given, like as you said, the many opportunities and different like, things we've been able to achieve through Vietnam. We want to thank the team, the whole team that unfortunately we won't be, yeah, they can't be here today, and the um, the school for provide such so much support for us. Our school backs us up with everything, everything. we need to actually achieve our uh, campaign. Our thank you for your school and everybody else and enjoys yes. as well for that. Hopefully, I will be seeing Vietnam. I'm hoping all around Bahrain and all around the world. Hopefully, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you for the cocoon. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go away. We'll be right back for more. During the holy month of Ramadan, many of us are reflecting on what we're thankful for. And I'm sure we can all agree that we're all thankful for the bond between mother and child. To tell us more is motherhood specialist and lactation counselor, Maryam Al Mahdi. Hello, Maryam. Welcome to our studio today. Thank you so much. So, Maryam, can you tell us what are your top tips for mothers during Ramadan? Well, uh, my always advice to mother is to trust in herself and to believe in her mind. Uh, she will be, inshallah, able to finish the month uh, with no problems. She has to take care of the hydrating um, status, like she has to take a hydrating food, and she has to take care of the dehydration sign and symptoms, like, for example, if she feels unusual headache, dizziness, vomiting, and or uh, darkness uh, in the urine, then she has to refer to her uh, health care provider and she has to keep an eye also. On that, um, just in case it might be another underlying condition or whatnot, if yes. she doesn't, if she just ignores the signs. Yeah, sure, sure. And at the same time, she has to uh, also keep an eye on her baby. He, he might be irritable and he might be inactive and the urine also will be darker than before. In this case, I think that she's exempted from fasting and she has to refer to her uh, health care provider to decide whether to break her fast or not. And uh, at the same time, she has to refer to her religious guide because he's the one who decides if the expiation is needed or um, how, the, how to pay back the, th those days. Yes, and how to return the days that she couldn't fast yeah. on those days. And specifically, what foods would you say are suitable for mothers who are breastfeeding and which foods aren't good for mothers who are breastfeeding? Yeah, actually, she has to concentrate on the food that hydrates her body, as I said before. For example, to break fast, she has to take dates and water, of course, because date is full with minerals. And then uh, she has to take Ruth, uh, soup, or um, puree that full in protein, uh, rich in protein, actually. And don't forget the um, uh, vegetables and uh, fruits like uh, watermelon it's try to be healthy and hydrated at the same time yeah yeah it's full with the minerals uh, watermelon coconut uh, syrup uh, leafy vegetables and um, all these uh, things cucumber I like also that cucumber it's very rich of minerals and it hydrates body so well um, uh, uh, she has also to, to, to use the galacticooks yeah yeah, like uh, the fennel seed, the fenugreek seed, and anise seed. It helps also to uh, increase and maintain the supply of milk. 
Okay, oh, wow, yeah. I, I did not know that. I didn't know that these seeds can actually help <laughs> with that. <laughs> yeah, at the same time, she has to uh, limit uh, the sugary and salty foods. Which is although very hard. I know, yeah, although I know yeah. the food desire, especially in Ramadan. So I can't stop her from taking all this, but I can advise her just to limit. So, for example, instead of taking six or seven bowls of al-gamat, which is a very famous dish during Ramadan, I'd she like can two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she can also reduce it down to two or three bowls. It will be very okay. And uh, also regarding the triangles of sambosa, instead of taking six or seven pieces, she can just reduce it down to, to two to three. At least that's they get to have a little bit of the sambosa. So like you said, instead of having seven to eight, have two to three just to cut it down a little bit. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm one of those people that likes to have seven, eight, maybe nine, ten as well <laughs> at the same time. Um, I would, um, Maryam, Ramadan is a very in introspective time. How can you mothers balance time for themselves and their baby? without compromising one another. Yeah, in my opinion, uh, the key word here is uh, time planning. Mama has to be a very good, good, good time planner, actually, in order to uh, run her life smooth. Um, no need to concentrate that much about the worshiping and spiritual practice, because in my opinion, actually, I feel that lactating baby, first feeding a baby and raising a baby during Ramadan is uh, <laughs> itself a worshipping sure. practice. That's by itself, exactly. Yeah, and no need to exaggerate, no need to feel regret that, oh, I didn't pray this time and that time. I mean the extra prayers. Yeah. Yes, and... Don't, uh, don't put so much... Um, pressure. Uh, pressure on pressure yourself. On yourself. Yeah. yeah. This is my advice, actually. And uh, you have to be, you have to um, learn, actually, before Ramadan, how to manage your time during Ramadan, so there will be a plenty of time during worshiping. My advice always to mothers is uh, that you can read Quran during lactating, but you can't also uh, exaggerate. You can't put a pressure on yourself. Everything will go smoothly, step by step. I mean, just take it slowly. Don't don't push and force yourself to do something that's that right. you know that at this specific moment you can't. That's right. And we've seen that even meditation plays a very big fact in regulating breast milk. How and what factors should mothers be considering this Ramadan? Uh, keep on meditation. Meditation is a wonderful technique uh, to increase milk supply and to maintain it as well. But add in affirmations also. Always speak to your mind that, oh, I'm strong. I'm going to finish Ramadan with no problems. I'm happy. Um, stay positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay positive. You can also uh, use the breathing techniques. For example, uh, my, my favorite one is uh, to inhale like how to how you are smelling a rose and exhale like how to how you are blowing out a, a candle. Okay. Uh, massage also, massaging of the breast is a very a wonderful technique uh, in order to keep the mammary glands as well as the ducts uh, patent. Okay, okay. So the mothers can do so many different ways to help actually produce more breast milk at the same time. Yeah. Um, is there anything you'd like to tell mothers this Ramadan? Um, I always advise them to um, to do one thing. It's a quote, actually. What brain says, body follows. Yes. Yeah. I like this quote. What your brain yeah. says, the body follows. I love. I love it. It's it's. Because it quote. works, it does work really. I told them to take rest and if it is possible uh, to take their annual leave if they are actually a working mamas, they have to or they it, it will be better if they take their annual leave during Ramadan. And uh, just listen to your body, listen to your um, mind and don't give, keep, g don't give your ears to the rumors. That and to the disappointed states. Yes, I, I, I agree with this. I agree with this. And this is for all, all through the year, not only for through Ramadan. Everyone should listen to this all through the year. Dr. Maren, would you like to tell us anything else or tell our viewers anything else before we uh, end this segment? I wish them a very blessed Ramadan uh, for everybody, especially uh, for everybody, uh, but especially for mamas, for the new mamas. Uh, you will rock it, you will do it, inshallah and you will finish Ramadan with no problems. Thank you, Mariam. And all to all the new mamas, you will rock it and you will do it. Like Inshallah. You just said. Inshallah. Don't go away. We'll be right back for more. Ramadan Kareem to all the viewers. 
During this holy month of Ramadan, it is very important for us to stay healthy. In order to stay healthier, we may practice regular exercises and practice yoga in daily life. Um, I'm going to demonstrate a few yoga poses that we can practice regularly. Especially we can start our day with a few breathing exercises which are called pranayama. To practice pranayama you may sit on a mat very comfortably either on your cross-legged sitting posture or uh, on your knees the way you feel comfortable. Back straight, body completely relaxed just to see the abdominal movement. I may request you to bring your left hand, place it loosely on your stomach and right hand on your heart region. We'll start deep breathing. Inhale deeply. Exhale completely. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Now that you have known the movement of your chest and your abdomen, you may place your hands in your lap loosely. Body completely relaxed, you may close your eyes and bring your awareness to your heart chakra or heart region. Now you may continue doing this practice a couple of times, keeping your back straight, face relaxed, chin parallel to the ground. We will do 10 deep breaths. Inhale, exhale. You may continue this practice for a couple of times the way you feel comfortable then slowly open your eyes give a little shake to your legs and again come to seated posture now i'm going to demonstrate a few upper body movements just by sitting on the mat comfortably again keeping your spine straight at all time please bring your hands to the shoulder level with inhalation, slowly bring your hands up above your head. With exhalation, bring your hands to shoulder level. Again, inhale deeply. Exhale down. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale deeply. Now you may hold the pose, retain the pose for five seconds, keep breathing for five and slowly bring your hands back down on the mat, keeping your arms straight and just relax. Now slowly bring your left hand on the right knee, stretch your right arm, place your right hand behind your back, giving a twist to your trunk, keep breathing, keeping your trunk twisted, looking at your right shoulder and come to the center now place your right hand on the left knee and slowly stretch your left arm place your left hand behind your back giving a twist to your trunk keep looking at your left shoulder keep breathing and come back to the center a couple of normal breath just feel the energy flowing in your body Now we may also practice shoulder rotation, place your hands on the lap, very very relaxed, back straight and slowly rotate your shoulders clockwise four times, anti-clockwise four times, feeling the movement of your shoulder muscles, very very intense move. Inhale again, rotate your shoulders. Very, very slow, four times. Just relax at the center, a couple of normal breathing. 
Now please bring your hands together in front of you. Open your arms with big inhalation, with exhalation. Slowly bring your hands together. Again, inhale, open your arms, open your chest, exhale together. Again, inhale deeply, exhale, bring your hands together. One last time, inhale deeply, hold the pose and keep breathing for five seconds. Hold the pose and feel the stretch on your entire arms. Again, bring them together and slowly place them on your lap. Again, keeping your back straight, we will do a few other um, movements. Now, we will practice the butterfly pose. Please bring your feet together. If you are comfortable, you may bring your feet closer to your body. If you feel comfortable keeping your feet away from your body, it's completely entirely up to you. Please interlock your fingers, bring your hands under your feet and just keep flapping your knees, keeping your spine straight. Now we will do a few active butterfly pose. Inhale, lift your knees up with exhalation, slowly bring your knees closer to the mat. Again, inhale up, exhale down. One more time, inhale, exhale, bring your knees closer to the mat, keeping your spine straight. Again, one more time, inhale deeply, with exhalation, slowly bend forward. Stay there for five seconds, keep breathing, normal breath, feel the stretch on your entire thigh muscles, and slowly come to the center and straighten your back. We will do a few more movements in seated posture. Now please bring your feet together, sit straight on your mat, beautifully keeping a big smile on your face. Now please bend your right knee, bring your right foot closer to your left inner thigh and just give your right knee a big hug, lengthen your spine, inhale deeply. With exhalation, slowly bring your head back to the knee. Again, inhale, lengthen your spine, exhale down. Again, one more time, inhale deeply, exhale, bring your head closer to the knee and stay there for five seconds. And slowly come out of the pose. Bring your right knee onto the mat, placing your right knee onto the mat, keeping your spine straight at all times. Now please place your left hand on your right knee, pushing your right knee closer to the mat. Stretch your right arm slowly, feeling the stretch on your entire right side. Exhale down. Again, inhale deeply. Exhale down. Inhale, active toes. Exhale down. This time we will retain the pose, hold the pose for five seconds, keep breathing and stay here, keep looking at your right hand fingertips while keeping your neck muscles straight and slowly release. We will practice the same for the left side. Now please bend your left knee, hug your left knee, keeping your spine straight, inhale deeply, exhale, head to your knee. Again, inhale deeply, exhale, head to your knee. This time we will retain the pose, inhale, lengthen your spine, exhale, head to your knee. Stay there for five seconds, keep breathing normally and slowly release. I'm just going to move on this side. Keeping your spine straight at all time, big smile on your face, right hand on the left knee. Stretch your left arm, look at the left hand fingertips and release. We will practice a couple of times, inhale, up, exhale, down. One last time, inhale and retain the pose, stay there, keep breathing for five, keeping your neck muscles straight and slowly release. Bring your feet together, 
feeling the stretch and the, and the energy in the entire body. Keeping your spine straight, now we will practice Pachimota Asana seated forward bend. Wonderful asana to keep your back muscles straight and healthier. Now please stretch your arms up above your head, hands on your heart, slowly bend forward, feeling the stretch on your entire spine. Again, inhale, hands up above your head, hands on your heart, slowly bend forward. One more time, inhale, stretch your arms, hands on your heart, slowly bend forward. You may place your hands on your feet or your ankles till you feel comfortable. Just keep breathing here and stay here for 10 seconds. Feel the energies flowing on your entire spine. Stay there, keep breathing. Keep breathing with every breath, go down a little bit more, feel the stretch and slowly vertebra by vertebra, straighten your back, place your hands behind your back to practice the inclined plane, the counter pose. Now with inhalation, slowly lift your hips up, back up and slowly bring your body down. Again, two more times, inhale, hips up, back up. Exhale, down. One more time. Inhale, hips up, back up. Exhale, down. Now slowly you may lie down on your mat. Just relax for a couple of seconds. Keeping your feet apart. Your hands relaxed, arms facing up. Just keep breathing normally. Feel your breath. Bring your awareness to your breathing. Now please bring your feet together, bend your knees. Now inhale, slowly lift your knees up, slowly exhale down. Again, inhale up, exhale down. One more time, inhale, bring your knees a bit closer to your chest, grab your knees, just Feel your spine, feel your lower back, flat on your mat, keep breathing and slowly release, calm out of the pose, straighten your legs. Again, please bring your feet together, hands by your side, palms facing the mat this time, spine straight, inhale, lift your right leg up, bend your right knee and press your knee to your chest slowly lift your head practicing pavan mukta asana and keep breathing here for five seconds slowly bring your head back and release come out of the pose now we will practice the same for the left side inhale lift your left leg up bend your knee press your knee to your chest using both of your hands Inhale, lift your head up, bring your head a bit closer to your knee. With exhalation, slowly bring your head back. Come out of the pose, keep breathing normally through your nose. Now we have come to the final relaxation pose in corpse pose. This is called Savasana, your feet apart, your toes have fallen outward, your hands a little bit away from your body. Arms facing up, eyes closed, lips slightly sealed. Keep breathing normally through your lungs. Feel your breath, feel all the energy flowing in your entire body. Your mind is calm, body is relaxed. Just feel the breath, keep breathing normally and relax for a couple of minutes. I'd like to thank all of you for practicing this yoga sequence with me and I'd like to wish all of you a very happy Ramadan Kareem. Stay well, stay healthy and happy. Namaste.
Well, everyone, I hope you all enjoyed that episode as much as I did. Don't forget to reach out to us on our social media accounts shown below and stay tuned for more happenings right here on Bahrain Now. I'm Lara Saman. Good night and God bless.